In addition to the stereoselectivity issues that we've already discussed, the Diels-Alder reaction has a site selectivity or a constitutional issue associated with what's called its regiochemistry. We're going to learn how to predict the regiochemical outcome of a Diels-Alder reaction in this video. And the good news is the regiochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction is eminently predictable by applying resonance. So we're going to see how that works. But first of all, let's talk about this regioselectivity issue. So the first thing to say is if the diene or the diene file is symmetrical, in other words, if it has the same substituents on both of the double bonds in the diene and both of the ends of the dienophile, then there is no regiochemical issue because no matter how the diene and dienophile approach one another, we get the same connectivity in the product. However, if both the diene and dienophile are asymmetric, meaning the double bonds of the diene are not equivalent and the two ends of the dienophile are not equivalent to each other, then we have a regiochemical issue. And to see that, I want to zero in on this Diels-Alder reaction between this methoxy-substituted diene and this formal-substituted dienophile. Notice that we've got the conditions for a regiochemical or a site selectivity issue here. This carbon, this end of the diene, is not equivalent to this end, thanks to the methoxy group here. And this carbon of the dienophile is not equivalent to this carbon, thanks to the formal group here. So there are actually two different ways to link up this diene and dienophile via a 4 plus 2 reaction. And I should mention that these two possible constitutional isomers that we get by engaging the 4 plus 2 reaction in different ways are called regioisomers. And a, regio, a pair of regioisomers are derived from the same reaction type. So both of these constitutional isomers are going to come out of concerted pericyclic 4 plus 2 uh, cycloaddition, but they're constitutional isomers. This is the definition of regioisomers. You'll also hear terms like regioselectivity, if one isomer is favored over another, and the regiochemistry of the reaction, which is the pattern of constitutional isomer that tends to come out of this reaction, the regiochemistry. So to understand this issue, let's highlight the ends of the diene and dienophile and see the possible ways that they can link up in this reaction. So we've got the ends of the diene in red and purple, and the reactive ends of the dienophile in orange and blue. One way we can connect these reactants to each other is just as drawn, connecting the red carbon to the orange carbon and the purple to the blue. That actually leads to the isomer on the right. Here's the red-orange bond, and here's the purple-blue bond. What we can also do, though, is imagine flipping over the diene so that the purple carbon becomes linked to the orange carbon of the dienophile, and the red carbon in the diene becomes linked to the blue carbon in the dienophile. This leads to a constitutional isomer of that product on the right, and that structure is drawn right here. We can tell it's a constitutional isomer if we pay attention to the methoxy group. Notice that the methoxy and CHO groups are in sort of a 1-4 relationship here, whereas they're in a 1-3 relationship in this isomeric product. So these have different connectivity. They're constitutional isomers. As it turns out, the major product is this one right here. This product is actually not observed at all. I say minor, but it's pretty much not formed at all. This reaction is exclusively selective for this regioisomer. And to understand the reasons why, we can look for electron donating and electron withdrawing groups attached to the diene and dienophile and engage resonance, looking for the carbons that are particularly negatively charged and particularly positively charged and linking those up. This will explain and rationalize the observed regioselectivity in the Diels-Alder reaction. So in this particular case, for example, we can look at the diene and notice, hey, we've got a methoxy group with a lone pair right here adjacent to a carbon-carbon double bond. So I can engage resonance like this and push negative charge onto this terminus of the conjugated diene. This shows that that carbon is particularly nucleophilic we would say, right? And if I can find a corresponding electrophilic carbon in the dienophile, it's likely that this nucleophilic carbon will link up with the electrophilic carbon in the dienophile. And the thing to notice about the dienophile now is that it contains an electron withdrawing group. And we can engage that electron withdrawing group in resonance, the CO double bond, by pulling electrons to this carbonyl oxygen and pulling electrons from here, leaving positive charge at this terminus 
of the dieno file. So notice now we've identified a particularly electrophilic atom within the dieno file, a particularly nucleophilic atom within the diene, and it is likely that these atoms will link up. This is the most electrophilic atom, this is the most nucleophilic atom, and so they will become linked to each other, and sort of by default, based on the way electron flow works in the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, the other ends of the diene and dienophile will also become linked. And so the two new sigma bonds here are indicated by the purple dotted lines, and this is going to lead to the major regioisomer, the major constitutional isomer of product, right? This is going to put the aldehyde group, the atoms of which are right here, in a one, two, three, four relationship to the methoxy, and that's exactly what we're seeing here with that aldehyde group in a one, two, three, four relationship to the methoxy group. So this is just one example. There are other ways that electron donating and withdrawing groups can sort of decorate the diene and dienophile, but you can always rely on resonance to be a guiding light in this situation. And what we're looking for are which terminus, which end, if you like, of the diene is the most nucleophilic end, and which end of the dienophile is most electrophilic. This is the typical situation. You can imagine situations where the dienophile is a nucleophile, and the diene is an electrophile. Those are generally called reverse electron demand diels alder reactions because they're much less common than this kind of polarization with the diene nucleophilic and the dienophile electrophilic.